just a few minutes ago there was Faith Mutsoli and a lady. Especially their children. And I was touched here. Yeah, people are going through a lot of things. A lot of things. And now we are now for in for the discussion of the day. A discussion of the day is self-awareness and sex education. I think that is not easy to discuss in African setup because of how we were brought up, how we were told that some things we should avoid until we call them tabiambaya. Yeah, they are known to be tabiambaya. So that's what we are going to discuss today, and it's already posted on the social media handles, that is at White Five. For we are asking, at what age should you tell our young ones, should we tell our young ones everything about sex, or everything about what people do, what most Africans do, Taya at what age should we do it? I'm not alone here, I'm with professionals, those who are on the field doing it, really, doing it hand on, those who are hand on, and there are two ladies being uh, WCW Ladies Day. We are, have here two Arembos. How are you? Good. We are good, thank you. Why are you, our loves? You're laughing at my introduction. <laughs> okay, this is uh, Josephine and uh, Jerob. I uh, love your names, and uh, now you're going to tell us more about you, starting with uh, uh, J-Rob, everything about you. Okay, mm. we can't finish everything about me <laughs> <laughs> today, but uh, my name is J-Rob Limo. I work with Ambassadors for Youth, an adolescent reproductive health program, an organization that works and advocates for integration of sexual reproductive health and services with the HIV services as well. So majorly, I am a youth advocate in the sexual reproductive health space. I, I am a leader in so many spaces as well. And I am a mentor for adolescent girls and young women at the community level. Wow. You are one in many. Yes, yes. Or many in one. Many in one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you have social media handles? Yes, I do have social media handles. Uh, Twitter, Jerob underscore Limo. Mm. And the organi my organization's uh, Twitter handle is IRHEP, A-Y-A-R-H-E-P underscore Kenya in capital on Twitter. Oh, that's yes. nice. Then we have Josephine. Josephine, how are you? I am okay. How do I beat that introduction mm. now? Um, <laughs> <laughs> my my name is Josephine Aching Odiambo, but I prefer Josephine Odiambo. For some reason, I don't like my maiden name. Look at you. Um, <laughs> I work as a program assistant at Youth Changes Kenya, which is a community-based organization that works with young women, specifically young women and girls in rural and peri-urban settings. So we work with women in Kakamega, in Limuru, we work towards ensuring that they are aware of their sexual reproductive health and rights, mm. and also they are aware of the referral pathways for sexual gender-based violence. We also offer psychosocial support to those who've experienced violence. We do advocacy, policy advocacy, to ensure that the needs of young people are addressed at the policy level. Uh, so, yeah, that's basically what I do. Uh, our organization's handle at, on Twitter is YC underscore Kenya. On Facebook, it's Youth Changes Kenya. On Instagram, it's also Youth Changes Kenya. For me, Twitter, it's Josie254KE. Yes, I am also a leader in different spaces. Yes. Wow. You guys are leaders. <laughs> <laughs> we, are wow. we are leaders, even if we are leading never our own had, lives, I've never leaders. had such a professional panel. I don't know, this, is, this, this segment, specific segment, is called Girls Talk. So yeah. I think we are in the best space for you, because... Yeah. And people watching, most of our audience are people of that age you've been mentioning about. So you are welcome to White Five Four, and let's have this conversation now, so that we demystify everything about what people should say, should feel about this sexual and sex thing. We were even skeptical if we should utter that word on air because <laughs> of how we were brought up. I don't know what is bringing all this thing. What do you think? It is very hard to talk about these things, yet people do them. Uh, I think the main reason we don't talk about it is how we were brought up. Mm. You know, we have been brought up in an African setup where these conversations are taboo conversations to have, mm. where these conversations are conversations that are hard behind the curtains. You know, things people do, taiki zimwa, things people don't talk about. You're not allowed to mention your sexual organs, you know, and call them by name. Mm. It's just how we were brought up. We've not. 
it's sex and sex conversations and reproductive health conversations is a taboo that is how we grew up you know the same way we see you know people in the europe or in the in the in the maju countries you know a mom telling you i love you and and giving you a kiss on your on your cheek is is, is normal it's, it's very normal, it's normal there. but for but us adults, yeah. Yeah, it's very it's very weird actually you know so it's up up bringing Just in Mm -hmm. The fact that now you work with these people who now like want to change things, do you call things by their names? <laughs> <laughs> do you? Yes. You call things by their names? Um, so the idea is, yes. yes, like she mentioned, we were raised to not mention this name. So we are trying to break that. So how we are breaking that is, if you're having a conversation about sex, we will have that conversation. And if we are speaking about reproductive organs, we will call a spade a spade. We will not sugarcoat. We will not call it uh, the names we are outside here, do do or whatever. No, we'll just call it with their names as they are. Oh. We just break down that barrier of the shame that comes with the conversation. Let me ask you another thing. <laughs> do you feel that we, the, our question, our question to the public, is at which age should we discuss these things with our young ones? Do you think that at the point where a child is learning to say mama, to say baba, to say my nose, to say my mouth, are you saying that they should also learn to call those other private parts with their names? Yes. That during that time? Yes. Is if it your safe? child is, is speaking by two years, you need to have that conversation. And I think the reason why you're asking that question with your face looking kind of funny <laughs> 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 is because <laughs> when we say that children need to be taught these things early, the first thing that comes to people's mind are, oh, how am I supposed to tell them about mm -hmm. sex? No, mm -hmm. just tell them this is, these are your private parts, these are the names that they are there. Yes. You know? So that uh, if maybe someone touches them in a certain way, they are aware and they come and tell you, by the way, so and so touch to be here. Oh. You know, as opposed to uh, them not knowing, they won't tell you because they don't know it's wrong. So just as, 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 as long as they can talk and they can understand. Just start that conversation. Your opinion on this, Gerald? It's it's actually very important. Whatever my colleague Josephine is saying is equally important. We've we've responded to cases in the community where a girl was molested and defiled, and she couldn't even explain herself. Hmm. She didn't know what to say because nobody told her that this is what this is called mm. but someone touched her and she didn't know what to do she didn't know what to say but for her nobody has ever told her that this is the name of this part and nobody should touch this part ex specifically but this had gone on for a long time and because the, g the young girl wasn't aware of the parts and how they are called and what should happen and that it is normal for them to actually be there and these changes to happen, then it creates a whole notion of confusion as well. So it's equally important that even a child, you know, children wana chezo konje, chababa na chamama, you know, and they touch each other and they do things and they're innocent, you know. But right now molestation and, and sexual harassment is so common that if we don't teach our children about it, if we don't teach our children to call the their body organs the way they are then it will be a problem because they might be going harassment they might be going through harassment for quite some time mm -hmm. but if they're not able to express themselves then it becomes a barrier don't you think you people want to turn people to be like animals <laughs> no animals animals don't fear anything they can do anything anywhere they don't wear clothes they're just there they can do even those things that they don't wait for the visa <laughs> to do it are you guys turning turning us to animals no, not really uh, not really it is just making you aware that is it nobody is is, is giving you the liberty the, the only liberty I'm giving you is by informing you and making sure you have the correct information. Uh, uh, Justin, don't mm. you think people, after knowing something, they want to experiment? Not necessarily. Especially children? No. Because uh -huh. our experience, because personally, I, I was taught about complex sexuality education when I was in high school. And we would have conversations. So when you talk about, <laughs> so this is where the problem comes in. It's not sex education, it's sexuality education. And sexuality encompasses a lot of things. Oh. Yes. So when you put it as sex education, mm -hmm. it's like you're only speaking about sex, no, but there are other aspects as well. Oh. But the essence of, of, of us talking about these things is not to promote immorality the way it's, it's been said out here or to 
make people like animals the way you put it. Yes. But to just give people information. Because based on the information I got in high school in terms of um, what sex is, how do you protect yourself from having, mm -hmm. from, from getting pregnant, in terms of decision making, self-esteem, all these things. I was able to decide, uh -uh. right now, maybe for me sex is not a priority. But in case I want to have it, there are these options of... Uh, me not getting pregnant. Mm. So the essence of CSC is for you to have the information. Once you have all the information, you're able to weigh and to help you decide. At what age did you have that information? Um, I started receiving information when I was in class six. Oh, six. Yes. And for me, so that was late. So five and below, you knew nothing. I knew nothing. I was hearing things. People were talking about things, and I didn't know what they were. Uh. So when I went and asking around, you know when you hear certain things, you ask your friends. Your friends tell you a different version. You ask the teacher, the teacher. <laughs> it's only videos that remember those are adult things uh, you're not supposed to be mm, talking about. Yeah. Home, I couldn't even ask a thing. Mm. So were it not for the people that came to school and spoken to us about all those things, I'd still, I'd th I don't think I would be where I am now oh, <laughs> in terms of information. Maybe you could have messed or something. E exactly. exactly. Maybe I would have gotten pregnant in the middle of the world. Do you have true, experience true, about true. that? At what age did you learn about the sexuality thing? Uh, uh, for me, it was different. I, I got into this space while I was still in, uh, in high school. High school? Uh, yes, high school. I started being a peer educator at in a facility. School. Okay. So uh, the role of a peer educator is to basically handle young people. You're trained, you're given information, just basic information. And then now you get to guide other young people as they come to the facility to receive services, you know, any sort of service. Mm. So I got information and honestly at this point I sit and tell myself if I didn't have this information, you most likely I would have messed somewhere. Oh, okay. Most so likely. It's like some people have messed because they didn't have information. Uh not necessarily. Mm. But information is power, right? Mm. Knowledge is power. Mm. You you're sitting here because maybe you took a certain course mm. and you're able to look at the camera and, and execute your shots and everything. Mm. And even whatever you speak verbally, because you had information, because you were taken to school. Same with us, not that everyone who messes up, and, and nobody necessarily messes us, messes up in the SRHR space. We don't say people mess up. Mm. Things just happen. Oh, yeah, there's no messing up. No, no messing there's, up. There's and no the messing reason up. we are saying this information is better because I have <laughs> a colleague and a friend who, she got pregnant think, at around 14 or 15, and when she got pregnant, for her, she knew, ya kona minyo. Her oh. tummy is growing and yana juwa ni minyo. She de warmed, exactly. She de warmed, she de warmed oh, wow. nothing. Until she went to the hospital, she was told, you're actually pregnant. Yeah. She has no idea what pregnant means. She couldn't know how she got pregnant in the first place. Because she had to but I only had sex once. What do you mean yeah. I'm pregnant? Yeah. Now you see, so we are trying to demystify certain things that by the time you are deciding to have sex, you know what you're doing mm -hmm. and you know the repercussion that comes with True. it. And you're able to see, am I able to, to take up the responsibility that comes in case I get pregnant? Am I able to do that? If I am not, then either I'll abstain or use a contraceptive. Okay, now let's get to what we've asked the public. Now, now you're professionals because we've been to this for some time now. Yeah. At what age should we tell our young ones everything about this thing. I, I want to give you a typical example. I have a, a friend called Morris and she has a daughter called Paris. Mm -hmm. So Paris asked the mom where children come from and the mom told her it's God who gives children. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So if she went to church to pray to be given children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To, she, wa she really wanted a child. So the, the young prayed, child wanted a yeah, child. Yeah, yeah. Okay. She prayed loudly that <laughs> God give me a child. I want a child now. I don't want these toys. Don't talk back. They don't oh, cry. Oh my yeah. God. They wanted real children. Mm. So somebody had her and it, they just laughed. Uh, just laughed at her. Nobody corrected her. Yeah. And after some time, she went to school, asked people, the uh, older girls, about it. And she, they told her that it got from sex. So she came back home and demanded that she be connected with somebody to do that with her so that she can get a child. Okay. This drives me to at what age, the way we ask the public, <coughs> at what age should we tell our young ones everything about sexuality? What? How old is Paris? <laughs> then now she's uh, about your age. Okay. But back then she was uh, class two really. 
Mm. Mm. Okay. Um, so we, <coughs> you know, there was the question that uh, parents had asked. That, that that is a very different yeah that is a very different child from another one who'll just ask where do children come from those are yes. two different kids mm -hmm. this one mm. one meaning by the time <coughs> parent is coming to ask the mom about where children come from one she's had things outside she just wants to confront from the parent to see if the parent will lie mm. the fact that the parent lied come they come from god um, give the parents an opportunity to go ask outside. Ah, let me go confirm if what mom said is actually true. Mm -hmm. So she went, asked outside. She was told how children are found. Um, and then just to prove what the mom said, that children come from God. So innocent, she went and prayed. Mm. And those people laughed at her, mm. as, as opposed to correcting her. Mm. So by the time, so as parents, by the time your child is coming to you to ask you a question, it means one, they already know, two, they are trusting you enough to ask you, and three, they want to see if you lie to them. Mm. So I think it's for parents, the child already had some level of information. So the conversation would be, for parents, the conversation would be, okay, what have you had? So the mm -hmm. parents have sat, they sat her down and asked, what will Miss Kianini about when you're true talker? Oh, that's the approach you should yes, be given. Eh? Yeah, exactly, because mm. it means she has some information. Mm -hmm. So the parents need to know, what does my child know? To mm. what extent do they know? Because information, yeah, okay. Um, you have sex and then you have a child, but then they've not even, they don't even know what sex is. Mm. So I think it depends. It depends with one, the age. The age determines what information you'd give for like two, three year olds. You just start with the private part, you start with good and bad touch, At for what example. Age you start about the private part? Two. At two years old. Yeah. Because they'll be akenda kukojoa. Mom, because I know of a child who they have a sibling, a man and a, and a, a girl and a boy. And the girl was like, why is my nini different from Nani's nini? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The mother froze. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, you don't know how to approach that one. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you handle that? Mm -hmm. exactly. You tell them you have different because you are a boy, you are a girl. Mm -hmm. You are a girl, that's why you have this. You are mm -hmm. a boy, that's why you have this. So that way, by the time they're growing up, they know I'm a girl and that's why my, my parts are different from the other person. So it depends one with the age of the child and what they already know. I think that's what I would say. I have a cousin called Lucy. She, mm -hmm. she grew up with us. We were mostly boys. She was the only girl. And she refused to be called a girl. Like if you called her a girl, that was an insult. Until her nickname became Lucy the boy. Lucy the boy. Because she was feeling she was different. I don't know what comes, uh, especially when people feel that some gender is not their gender because there is a dominant gender about this. Uh, it, it wouldn't be necessarily because there's a dominant gender with the setup you grow in. Uh, it will be even emotionally and, and physically and how you feel and how you feel you should relate like. For others it will be, you know, I've grown up in a household full of boys, you know, we, 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 we relate this way, we, we dress this way, and I feel like this is cool, this is what fits me, mm -hmm. and I'm comfortable with that, mm -hmm. and, and I don't see anything wrong with that. For others, it will be, you know, body-wise, biology, the aspect of hormones, you know, and how I, inside I feel, I feel like, I, me, I don't want to be a girl. Mm -hmm. No, me, I, me, I should behave like a girl. Mm -hmm. No, me, I'm not a girl, you know. Because it's how I feel and how I feel I should be treated and how I should relate and how people should perceive me as well. So it's, ne it's not necessarily because of a dominant gender that you grow up in. It could be because of various reasons that people decide to be who they want to be. There are children as young as, as three years old play Chamama. And they play it real. The, f the only thing that uh, they don't do is hiding. They can do it in open. Yeah, or veranda, kila mtu akiona. Mm. Where di, do they know this? Where do they know that things are done this way? It's, it's watching. It's talking about it. It's listening. Children, children are the most curious people. Uh. If, if you look at kids, the way they behave, they're the most curious people. And, and they would want to see where this ends up. 
I, they will touch oil at a jipaka. Ah mama na jipaka na nipaka yeah. ngai mafuta. Hadi apake ile ya kutoa uh, kutoa tin. <laughs> <Yote. laughs> you know, and, and it's it's innocently because children are generally curious. Yes. You know so they will sit in ah those people are kissing. I saw that. Ooh. You know my mom and my dad behave this way. I saw that. And that's why Josephine has kept on insisting that even with sexual sec, uh, comprehensive sexuality education mm. there is the aspect of age appropriate mm. there is a reason a child in in play group is doing play group and one in in baby class is doing abcd and why someone in form 4 is doing you know Our chemistry <laughs> and, and 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 you know algebra and all these things because it's in a progress your brain what what the brain of the child is able to handle mm. that is where you start from joy calls it monkey see monkey do <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you start you start as in from the <coughs> least thing this yeah. is my eyes this is my nose this is my mm. mouth this is my you my know my only problem Jerome, mm -hmm. is that she will call it loudly where people are where adults are maybe it's itching and then a, a shout to hey, <laughs> It's true, it is itching. Why are you trying to tell the child? Why are you trying to tell the child? It is itching. The child will cry if they want to cry and talk about it. The thing is, the main, the crossing line is, if you don't tell your child, you've given us an example, if you don't tell your child, someone else will tell them, and trust you me, they will tell them the wrong thing. Oh. So I'm not sure I'm to a kid. I'm not to a kid. A private part with this real name in crowd, maybe in church or maybe in a committee where you are. Na semi a shout you kitu. Auna. Anta anta kusu. Akuna ibu eh. Maybe I'm not a kusu. I'm a I eat a tukwa jina. Obviously, I don't think they would do that. They would do that unless they have to. Like for example, like we say, my coming na anajiska pujukuna. Seta kumbi a mam. Anajiska pujukuna. He plays like you told them, mm. you know. Mm. As opposed to, a fatherly woman, as someone, and attack a kujukuna hapo. As opposed to, let me say, attack a kujukuna, but a many maza. You know, as a woman, I'm sorry, kujukuna. Maybe you'll go to the, with them to the washroom and find out what is actually happening, mm. and maybe they have an infection. You'll be able to see. Now, woman, I'm many maza, and I'm mia, I'm many maza because you've not had that conversation mm. with them. I'm many maza, and I'm mia. By the time you're knowing what is actually happening, the child has, has suffered really a lot. Let's now talk about what teachers should do. At what uh, level should we introduce this particular unit to the children in school? <laughs> in school? Uh, allow me to tell you that the youngest mom we have in Kenya is nine years is old. Nine years old. Nine? The nine years old. That is the A youngest mom? mom. Yes. yes. Oh, oh. Nine years old. Hey, hey. That clearly states, you know, over since the pandemic and even before the pandemic, we have been dealing with very high numbers and cases of teenage pregnancies from the, as in the least age is nine. So you can imagine, you can imagine how dire this information is. And I took Amta, listen to these young children talk, listen to them talk, ah, I'm sister, you know, mm -hmm. that tells you that these kids are actually exposed. exposed. They know more than you, honestly. I can tell you, I can bring you a 15-year-old who will talk to you, you won't even believe what they're saying. Mm. So that brings the need for uh, uh, teachers to as well have these conversations, even from Tunanza kusoma science class six. Mm. Tunanza kusoma reproductive health in class mm. six, mm. right? So that tells you from class six upwards, you know, and even from below class four, class five, you start the introductory part. You start the introductory <coughs> part. This is this is my sexual organs. This is what, how it operates. This is how it develops. This is what should not be done. This is what should be, be done. done. Mm. Because if you leave it out, a girl will go, Anakatiwa, amefurahi, she's happy, innocently and, and full of naive. And this young man also is not really informed. Mm. But he anataka kufit in. Mm. He anataka kuku. Ay, mabishite zangu anakatiana. Yeah, yeah. mi pio ni kona mamzi. Ni kona madem. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, <laughs> nani mtoi. Yeah. But innocently, it's because they don't know and they don't have someone to actually tell them, okay, fine, you have a girlfriend. But this and this are the lines you shouldn't cross. Mm. Or this is how you should go about it. Because we say, don't tell me not to do. 
you don't tell a child not to do, they will be rebellious. They'll mm. do it actually. They'll do it actually. You should, give, you should tell them, the, convince them with the reason. The reasons, why, exactly. Why, what should be done, at what time. At what time, and this is not right, and this is right. Bring them together and talk to them, because most of them, they rely on TV, Google, Wale cool boys when you're kokwamta social media as well. We are we are a social media yeah. generation, mm -hmm. you know. So if they don't have access to correct information, the University of Google will mislead <laughs> them. Do you think we are not giving? Do you think schools are giving enough currently in Kenya? Uh, <coughs> so currently there is a CBC curriculum, and I was privileged enough to review uh, PP. Play group PP1 to play PP1 to PP3, the curriculum that was there when it was being uh, created. And some of the things that are there, they are speaking about hygiene, how to brush your teeth, how to shower, how to clean yourself, brush your shoes, your hair, which is good. Those are important things to have. But then also, it's not very comprehensive. Because, um, and as much as yes, they are saying it's there, it's not necessarily there. Because if you ask, they tell you, but we have life skills. But then most of the time, it's as a life skill, one end up here, one afunzo mau, it's not really there. Or the information they are being given, it's very shallow. And then if you ask, because I remember in, when we would ask questions about, um, someone would ask, um, teacher, na sex ni nini? And mm -hmm. then the teacher would be like, sex? And the teacher has left it. Mm. They won't have the conversation again. So I think the information is not very comprehensive. The information being given in school is not comprehensive at all. Some schools don't even give it at all. And yet, they'll still be there asking, why are people getting pregnant? Where are we going wrong? But the issue is, you're not giving this full information. Because some will tell you, like if you speak to girls who've gotten pregnant at the community, you will see. Mi hata siku anajua sex ni nini. Nilisikia toa kusek sema wanafanya hivi. Kwa mi nikamua. Siku anta kwa left out. Kamua chape mi nifa. Mm. Nifani. Mm. And then akapata kwa na ball. Others anasema. Mi hata siku anajua ni kwa na ball. Mi nikuwa na tutumbu ina grow. The casing point ni nilipeana before. Like they don't know. Others genuinely don't know. Mm -hmm. And then when they get pregnant. That's when they start being told. Oh. Oh, when you are not a vampire, you are immoral. But mm. then they did, they genuinely it's had no information, information at mm. all. Our mm. corner, Jua. and because if it, if if we say we, they're given at the school level, the ministry is a bit skeptical about it. They don't want it to be given at the school. Mm. So these people are left because if you tell them the school is saying, but they they are with their parents. Parents are supposed to provide this information. Parents are saying no. The church, church are the ones that are supposed to guide our kids. So this young person, Anarushwa, school school home church school home church in the middle of all these things ah si akona bestie atapata the wrong information and then we all know the results well, you are reviewing that curriculum yeah. why didn't you add why didn't we, you add that particular the part? only thing we can do during the review of government documents the only thing you can do is give recommendations it's up to them whether they take oh, it or so not recommend that. we recommend all the things they we didn't are saying include here. It. And in the Liberal Tech Force, you are doing as an, organ as an organization to maybe increase the information on what our children are given in school pertaining to sexuality education? Uh, this is one of the deliberate yeah. actions. Uh, just holding open conversations about it. We realized for quite some time that we had been, you know, advocating and pushing for comprehensive sexuality education to be included in our curriculum while leaving the community and the parents and the caregivers outside of it because they are the ones who get to you know talk to these young people they're the ones who live with these young people so right now one of our major uh, concentration is creating awareness on comprehensive sexuality education having engagements with guardians and community unajua unauliza mama mbona hukumwambia anasema sasa nitaongelelea aje nitaanzia aje but just sitting down with guardians and parents and women and men at the community level and telling them by the way this is what we have this we think will help your young people in school you know and just getting a buy in from them that is one of the major thing we've been doing we've been also having engagements with policy makers and policy impl implementers as well uh, like Josephine said we have been really pushing and holding social media engagements and partnering with organizations as well who work in this space 
as well. Uh, honestly, it's it's still a major barrier with the church being a major hindrance as well. You calling church being a major hindrance? <laughs> yes, yes. The church, the church is a major <laughs> hindrance. Not necessarily that the church is wrong. Yes. But the church think that we, when we allow comprehensive sexuality to be taught in school, we will be exposing our young people to sex information. We'll mm. be giving them permission to go out there and have mm -hmm. sex, mm. but which is not the case. The case is we are giving them information so that Akiamka na semanena kwa boyfriend yake atakwa able to decide, eh, by the way, Josephine ni nifunza, mm. teacher li niambea, this and this is how I should go about this. Mm. So, let me hold on. That young man will say, by the way, kuna stories a condom, teacher li nifu, Mm. It is not a must. I can wait. Sex is not going anywhere. Mm. So it's just the church is a bit skeptical, the same way the Ministry of Education is. And it, it's a create a lot of barriers. But we are trying to help them see how important CAC is to our children. And to add wow. on what Jerop is speaking about, mm. um, in 2013, the, the Ministry of Education and Health and, and, and the Ministry of Health assigned a uh, a commitment, the Eastern and Southern African commitment. And in this commitment, commitment, they were to one, and I quote, reduce teenage pregnancy, reduce the spread of HIV infections among young people, and also to reduce sexual gender based violence. And uh, unfortunately, none has been done. Because if you look at the data last year, almost 13,000 girls dropped out of school because of teenage pregnancy. So it means little effort is being put into ensuring that teenage pregnancy is being eradicated. And she'll speak on. HIV as well, and also sexual gender-based violence. We've seen on TV, guys are getting raped left, right, and center. People are murdering each other. Yani, all these stories, they're happening, and, and it's, it's shameful that um, nothing is being done, sort of like, or the efforts being put in place are not necessarily working. Mm, okay. mm. And in this commitment, yes, the commitment ha ha elapsed last year, because it was supposed to elapse last year. And if we were reviewing to see, to just gauge what was being done, and unfortunately, little or less had been done. Because bad to want change pregnancy, bad is issues in our community. So we are trying to push the government, the Ministry of Education and Health, to recommit when they were signing commitment tenor, so that they are able to work towards achieving this, this, the goals that they did not achieve. Do you think there are just ways in which they can be included in the policy, generally maybe from the legislation? Uh, arm of our government so that we, you just push them through our representatives because I think that's where policies are made, the parliament and all that. Mm -hmm. You can petition, you can petition the parliament to maybe legislate something on that or maybe talk to one of the representatives to <coughs> give a motion about it because you know people are, don't, are not understanding like now since we started this conversation mm. I understand it better than I used to do it mm. even when I was doing research for this show I was still like uh, these people are going to spoil our children <laughs> now are going to do it. but no understand it better. Do you think there's just a way you can maybe push for legislation or some sort about the inclusion of these materials in the education material? Uh, so we do have policies and guidelines that speak to uh, the provision of this information in school. But the issue is implementation. That, that's our major problem. Because in terms of bills, there was a reproductive health care bill that we had worked on Spooky for a very long cake. time. Mm. <laughs> and then when it got to parliament, mm. the it conversation like shifted mm. from it being a reproductive health care bill to being an abortion bill. And that is how our bill was put on hold. So you see, we are we are trying so hard to to push for the well-being and to push for policies to be implemented and to be developed, but then it becomes really hard on our end when when all our efforts sort of like don't bear fruit, or when they'll develop the policy, yes, mm. but then they won't allocate um, resources for the implementation of this policy. Mm. So that's actually our major challenge. We do have policies in place, but the issues in implementation of this particular policy, casting point of the SR commitment that I was speaking about. Jerob, yes. do, do you, I'm trying to figure out what exactly you guys want. You want uh, sexuality education to be like part of curriculum, to an extent that it is examinable, like it's one of the, the subjects in school so that it will be examined at the end of the term or something. Uh, actually, yes, that is the idea. But remember, it must be age appropriate. Mm. Again, I have said a child in class six does not have the brain to understand what a, a, a person in form four is learning. Mm -hmm. So age appropriate. Mm. You know, the same way in class six we talk about now, 
just the outer part you know this is this part this is this part this is how it works and then when you get to form 4 you're actually learning about the reproductive health itself which is not necessarily comprehensive so it is just about allowing our kids to actually access this information in school wakwe aware mm. wakwe aware i mean in this day and age nobody should get pregnant and think that i have worms mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we are in 2021 mm -hmm. you get nobody should uh, should be told by the boyfriend that if you have sex one That's time mm -hmm. and you go and, and wash yourself you won't get pregnant mm. nobody should be told that if we, we have sex standing you won't get pregnant mm -hmm. but imagine that is what our young girls are being told Oh. That is how our young boys are being From sodomized. From your experience, that's what they know. Yes, yeah. that is what they know. That is how our boys are being sodomized and harassed simply because they don't have information and they don't know how to go about it. Now, obviously, ni kitu shameful. Hatufai kuyongelelea. And you will be blamed for putting yourself in that situation mm. to even make matters worse. Do you entirely blame this on the lack of information or don't you think there are other factors? Is the information now the only thing according to you? I think the major thing is information cause based and this is based on the conversation with, we've had with the young people because there was a team we were having a discussion with young people in Kakamega with young women and we were asking um what are the things you've been told that if you if you do if you have sex and then you do won't get pregnant like Jerob said and one said if I have sex ni kunywe cock amani joshe na ndimu ni kupoa I won't get pregnant or if I have sex kwa bush Ah, I won't get pregnant. <laughs> no, you see, by the time we are telling them about all things, all these things are lies, mm. they are myths, they were actually very shocked and very surprised. Because that is the narrative of me grow up or kiambiwa. Mm. So the fact that we told them and they are able to tell other people, because we've had instances where some are calling and saying, and saying, calling you and telling you, just feel, thank you. Thank you for the information you gave. Mm. The information you gave many idea mm. and I'm able to help other people so information is very very important and then we need to complement information and services mm. uh, so when they when they when you give this information and in case a young person is a service you provide that so information will go a very long way in curbing the issues that we have so it's the first step towards uh, reducing all these issues that we're experiencing in terms of reproductive health but again somebody thinks that uh, this education is en encouraging teenage pregnancy how that uh, you are telling somebody how to do something so he will just be going to do it <laughs> he will just be going to do it because you've told them how to do those are the myths now around, yeah. mm -hmm. around the sex education exactly. mm -hmm. tell me how you do debunk this mm -hmm. how we debunk it is when somebody because we've had conversation where but if you you tell them they will want to experience it mm -hmm. and based on the you, we've, we've been speaking to a lot of young people and mm. none of this has happened. Mm. Usually what happens, it, the approach also matters. If you come and tell me, Josephine do not have sex, who is Josephine for you? I will go have to just prove to that I had and nothing happened. Mm. But if you tell me sex is there, you can have sex, but if you have sex, remember, there's pregnancy, there's HIV infection, there's STIs. Mm -hmm. So by the time, ni me kachi ni me fikria ku have sex, I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. If I have this sex and I get pregnant, can I able to take care of this child? Mm -hmm. No. I only will take care of this child. Uh, so the alternative is, if I cannot abstain but I want to have sex, what's the alternative? The alternative is, there's condoms, there's other forms of contraceptive. So you see, they are able to weigh. Because yeah. most of the time, maybe I received the information in high school, and honestly, after I received the information, I did not go and try out Trizex and see what they are saying is working. No. I was able to weigh and decide, and this also, um, this also applied to the people that we were taught with all of us. We are able to... so. CSC just enables you to weigh and helps you to make an informed choice based on the correct information from that you have. Discourse, from this discourse, I deduce that uh, the problem, according to you, is culture and religion, if I'm not wrong. Like this is how we are grown up. Somebody is saying that you are taking us back to, you are taking us to the West. Mm -hmm. Yes, that we are uh, at the West and uh, we should not, uh, we, we have our cultures to retain. So talking sex with children and with teenagers is a West thing, it's not an African thing. That is culture. Um, uh, don't you think you guys are, are eroding us, are making us watumbo? Honestly, no, I don't think I'm eroding anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, because if... If we didn't have teenage pregnancies, if we didn't have uh, 
how do I put it? Young people who are married, who are even below 18, you know, and it's, it's also a, a barrier of ensuring that our children grow to fully finish their school, you know, explore other avenues, find something and make something out of their lives, rather than and I'm, and I'm just giving an example because not ne not necessarily that religion and, and is a major barrier, but also poverty and, and our lifestyle as well. You may grow up, mother, send your uh, information, mama kuangi, dada kuangi as well. So, Jonah mm Menikatia to go class eight. Jonah -hmm. uh, you love me, fine. To now, to, we have we have sex. I get pregnant. I can't stay at home. So Mimi and John decide to take our single house there and we start a life. And it becomes a cycle. It becomes a cycle where as young as a young couple we are rooted here. We didn't finish school, hakuna job, hakuna do. What do we do? We are limited to this location and to this environment and to this lifestyle as well. So it's not necessarily taking us to the western but just also allowing our young people to access information so that we are able to make decisions poor it's, it's it's we are trying also to modernize and and to do away with some cultures which are not right like child marriages femi uh, genital mutilation as well mm -hmm. these are cultures that we are trying to end it's not necessarily that saying a child shouldn't be married it's is a western thing no, it is wrong. It is wrong to marry a child. This is a mm. child. You're, you're putting them in situations that they shouldn't be in physically, mentally, spiritually, and even sexually as well. Mm. So it's wrong. You, you are doing FGM. Why are you doing FGM at this era? It's not necessarily westernization. So sexual comprehensive sexuality education is not about how to have sex. Mm. It's mm. not about yeah, well how to have <laughs> sex. That's what people think. That yeah. is what people think. Mm -hmm. It is about... These are my organs. Mm. This is what should be done. This mm. is should be shouldn't be done. Mm. Someone should not touch me. If they touch me, that is sexual harassment. I can go to the police station and report. If I am raped, I can. I know. Don't wash your clothes. Don't shower. Rush to the health center. Get you know. Get your P form and do this. As in, it is just empowering a young person on what to do, how to approach life, even as you grow up how to make assertive decision. The lady was saying she was talking about marriage, you know, and she was talking about violence mm. and what to do. It is also about empowering our young people not to be in a relationship where there is intimate violence because it's common right now. We're waking up, people have killed each other, people have murdered very young potential people, you know, and why? Because this young woman or this young man, akukwana information, ajwebe, then we can sit down and talk to solve the issue. By the way, come out a ball, kuna contraceptives. So, akuta kwa an option, akuta kwa na reason, ya upate ball, and then you story, and then to pigare, and then to kosani, ama you have to do an unsafe abortion. But church teachers <coughs> abstainers. Mm -hmm. Most religious organizations teach abstainers yeah. and abstainers <laughs> and all. Should not talk about other things. Don't you think this is where you are clashing with the church? Um, so, I think where we are not, we are not necessarily clashing, um, what I would say is, Honestly, uh, if abstinence was working, we would not be having teenage pregnancy. Let's just be honest. Mm -hmm. If abstinence was actually working, mm -hmm. we would not be having this teenage pregnancy that you are seeing. Mm -hmm. And in certain terms, we agree. It is not. Yet, it may, it may work for those feeling in Europe. It mm -hmm. may not work for other Everybody. people outside. Mm -hmm. So I want to give people options. There's abstinence, but then for those who, those who cannot abstain, this is the other option. So CSE is a holistic conversation. It's conversation about how parents need to communicate with their kids. It's conversations about what role the government plays in ensuring mm -hmm. we, we are well. It's conversations about self-esteem, how you make decisions, what you need to look at. It's a holistic thing. It's not necessarily focused on sex alone, but there are other aspects as well. I think that's where a lot of people uh, misinterpret it. It's it's not, I want to say categorically, sexuality education is not only about sex. There are other things that are being talked about, not necessarily sex. There are people, finally, because our ta the time is strictly on us, there are people who, ladies who had been abused, mm -hmm. maybe even by relatives, they didn't say it because it was a taboo to say something like that. And they grow up maybe hating men or hating anything about the sexuality and everything because they could not say it, they were abused, they didn't like it, and they could not say it, and all that. Is this, what are the things that you are trying to 
disambiguate so that we, things become normal so that it is easy to say when you are abused and all that. Yes, mm -hmm. I mean, there is the reason why the Constitution says it is defilement, it is rape, and you will be jailed for a number of years because mm -hmm. it is wrong. But you, we have been raised in a space where I am raped by a relative, I am threatened and I'm told, ah, ah, usiongelele, mm. usiongelele, yo tuta solve tu hapa, mm. leta ngombe mbili imeisha. Mm. No, but that has, because that has done damage to me. And that's why we are raising a generation of young people who are mentally damaged because they've gone through sexual harassment, even by house helps. We've seen these cases on the TV and we continue to see them. So we are allowing our young people, nikifanywa hivi, nikishikwa hivi, nikifanywa hivi, so that it does, you don't keep quiet and it becomes normal. You know, me, they've been molested by their parents for years, ever since their child. I wish we child. had the whole day mm -hmm. here just to discuss it. Um, yeah. it it's really interesting. But uh, you sound like you talk this to girls more than boys. <laughs> Aren't you discriminating against <laughs> boys? We are not discriminating about, uh, against the boys. It's just that women are more vulnerable, vulnerable, vulnerable as opposed yeah. to men. Because when you're talking about teenage pregnancy, it's the woman's life that will mostly be affected. So mm. that's why the conversation is mostly around women. But then we are very cognizant about male engagement, which mm. is very, very important. So yeah. Yeah, Jerob, this camera, mm -hmm. tell us final word, final word on what you want the public to know, mm -hmm. especially from your forte. Uh, I think the most important thing, especially for the young people watching, is before you only live once, you know, before mm. you do that. Before you YOLO. Yeah, uh, before you YOLO. <laughs> please <laughs> always remember that uh, your choices have consequences. If you really have to have sex again we are also pushing for abstinence if you really have to please remember the avenues that you can use to prevent uh, pregnancies hiv and stis and and some of these things are very serious they, there is no reversal mm. there is no reversal at all so make sure you make the right choices remember to follow us as well for access of information uh, from our pages because we talk about this, we teach young people as well and we would love to actually ensure that you young people have access to comprehensive information on sexual reproductive health and rights as well. Thank you. Jesse, address the nation. <laughs> my, my address goes to, as always, the CS Magoha, my address is to you. Uh, it would be great if you could recommit to signing the Eastern and Southern African Commitment to ensure that uh, you we reduce the cases of sexual gender based violence in our country, we reduce the levels of teenage pregnancy and to also reduce the levels of new HIV infections. So you signing that commitment will go a long way in ensuring that the reproductive health rights and needs of our young people are catered for. Today was education. We've learned we've learned so much. Personally, I've learned things that I have gone through the education system that have never been told. I wish I knew this before I was young. There are things that I could have maybe helped people to know better now that in, I'm in this position where I talk to people almost daily. But information is power. So if you know, you will decide. So you'll make informed decision. This has, this has been good. And I think we'll have more conversation about this now that, uh, <laughs> now that we know each other. I think we'll organize so that we have more, more about yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah, this is why in the morning, and thank you for tuning in. Up next, we are coming back to maybe see your comments with the Faith Mutsoli. Keep it locked. <laughs>